Praise the Lord, everyone. Sean back with another video for you all. I wanted to talk about those people who would like to mix works and grace. And I would like to ask the question of what covenant are you under? Because essentially what they're doing is they're mixing old covenant with new covenant. And as we will see, you cannot do that. You're either under one or the other. And for us today, us today, we are all under the new covenant. So if we actually start here in Galatians 2.14, this is what Paul says. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So Paul was confronting Peter for his hypocrisy. Here Peter, being a Jew, living in the manner of the Gentiles and not as the Jews do, is now compelling the Gentiles to live as Jews. And you would call this being a Judaizer. So Paul is calling out Peter on his hypocrisy. First of all, them living after the manner of Jews, trying to still be under law. Paul is saying that they're not even obeying the gospel, which is grace and not the law. But on top of that, Peter is trying to have pe people, these Gentiles, do something that he's not even doing himself. So that is very similar today to those that would have grace, but then want people to mix works. And in reality, they're not even doing it themselves. Maybe in their minds they feel like they are, but I mean, honestly, they really aren't. So... What I want to do is I want to look at the old covenant and just kind of see what it consists of and then the new covenant. So here in Exodus 19, three through five, it reads, and Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So, God is telling Moses to tell Israel to say, if you listen to my voice, keep my covenant, then he says, you will, you know, you will be my people above all, all other people. Right. So in the same chapter, we go to verse eight. The Israel responds and all the people answered together and said, all, not some, not most, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So from there on out, the Lord gave all of these commandments, these, these statutes and commandments for the nation of Israel to follow. And the covenant was, as we just read, if they did everything that God said, right? Then they will be blessed above all other nations everything all right now we're going to go to deuteronomy 28 and 1 and essentially deuteronomy for the most part is, is just the law given over again to the generation that actually made it out of the wilderness and into the promised land it reads and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. 
So again, we see that this old covenant was based off of Israel doing all things, all commandments, all statutes that God set before them. If they did all things, they would be a blessed nation. Now, let's look at what happens if they didn't do that. Deuteron the same chapter, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all. And I keep <laughs> emphasizing that word all because you will have these people that love to mix grace with works. And they kind of, they will actually give some sort of leeway to, you know, still sinning and, you know, you're trying your best and you may sin sometimes. But as we see here, under the old covenant, there were no trying your best or if you kind of sin sometimes. We see here all you have to do all. So to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, this is a standard under the old covenant. So for people that want to take this same aspect and mix it in with the new covenant, which is of grace, we see here that if you fail to do all, then you're under a curse. There is no leeway for messing up, essentially. And we saw that whenever Israel obeyed God and did everything he wanted, guess what? They were blessed. But when they deviated, what happened? They ended up going through a lot of turmoil. So, let's look at the new covenant. Luke 22 and 20. Likewise, this is Jesus talking, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So this New Testament and this new covenant is found where? In my blood. That's Jesus' blood, which is shed for you. Now, where in that is the New Testament found in Jesus' blood and in what a person does, the works they do? It's only found literally in Jesus' blood, and Jesus says, which is shed for you. So these things are being done for us. So let's look at Hebrews 9, 14 to 16. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. So we see that Christ came so that he could redeem people from the, the, the curse of the law, the first covenant. Because no one, Israel could not keep it. No man could literally keep God's laws perfectly. That's, that's what it means to keep. You can't keep and break God's laws. You either keep them or you don't. And we see here, according to verse 16, he says, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. So if according to Luke 22, 20, the New Testament is found exclusively in Christ's blood, and then we're seeing here in Hebrews 9, 16, that in order for a new testament or a new covenant to come into play, there has to first be the death of a testator. And we just read that that testator 
is Christ. Okay. Now, we're going to go into a book and chapter that, you know, I believe, and I'm sure plenty of others believe, that is a very powerful chapter, very powerful, very straight to the point when it comes to showing that you do not mix works and grace for salvation to be considered righteous in the eyes of God. So we're going to read this and we're going to see how the old covenant is different from the new, how the old was never meant to say, but only to point to the new and that you cannot mix the two. So we start off, O oh, foolish Galatians, and this is Paul talking, who have bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So, here we have Paul asking the question. Did you receive the spirit by doing works or by faith? And then he's an answering a rhetorical question. It's like, are you so foolish? He says, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? So, if you came to get the spirit, you can only get the spirit if you're saved, if you're a believer. So if you have the spirit, that means you're saved. So how is it essentially Paul's asking, how is it that you got the spirit by grace, but now you have to be perfected by doing these works when that wasn't even the way you got the spirit in the first place? We're going to continue. Verse four, have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain. He, therefore, that ministereth to you in the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So he's reiterating the same thing. Do, I, do you all have the spirit and are miracles being done because you've basically worked and been obedient enough or based off of faith? And as we'll see, we'll see the point that Paul is making is you got the spirit and the miracles are being done because of faith. Verse six, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So we, you have people that love to quote James two, and they love to talk about how faith without works is there being alone. And they want to use that chapter and that verse to say, well, this is how one is saved. They will say, well, we don't we don't deny that you have to have faith, but you also have to have works. And they will use something like James 2, 14 and 17. Um, but they won't even really they won't go to James 2, 23, where this where Paul says the same thing, how. Abraham believed and it was counted to him for righteousness before he even did any works. Paul talked about how Abraham was made righteous in uncircumcision before he was even circumcised. After God came to him and made this covenant with him and made the covenant about being circumcised. Paul said that he was already righteous in the state of uncircumcision. So Paul is making a distinction here to say if you it's not about you being a child of Abraham by works, you're a child of Abraham how? By faith, apart from works. Okay, we're going to keep on to verse 8 and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen that Heathen is another way to identify non-Jews, non-Israelites. Through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations 
be blessed. So how are all nations blessed? Through faith. Verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now, wh what do we just get done reading in Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 15, I believe it was, that if they fail to do all things, that they will be what? Cursed. So let's get back to it. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in some things, a few things, everything but one thing. No. All things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you have someone seeking to be justified by their works, guess what? You have to do it all, all the time. Whatever standard is going to make you righteous, if you're doing it by your works, you have to be that way all the time. And if you're if you don't, what does he say? Cursed, you're cursed. Let's go on to verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. So sometimes you have people that like to use this verse where it says the just shall live by faith. And they would essentially tie that to James 2. You know, faith without works is bad, dead being alone. So they would take this verse to just shall live by faith. And they would make it seem like this part about living by faith is like the practice. What you do day by day. When in actuality, we see the context that this live is not referring to a daily practice. This live is a, a spiritual reference to you being from spiritually dead to now spiritually made alive. You spiritually will live by faith, not by works of the law. Let's go on to verse 12. And the law is not of faith. Wait a minute. Let me say that one more time. Because that that's probably one of the most clear, distinct statements for this topic that can be made. The law is not of faith. So works is not of faith. Okay, and we know according to Hebrews that without faith it is impossible to please God. Paul here says that the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you seek to be justified by the law, which is not of faith, then you will live in them, meaning that you will have to do them all the time. Or, according to we read in verse 10, you're going to be cursed. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So literally, Christ came to become a curse for us. For us, since like Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are all under a curse. We all transgress God's laws. Christ came and became a curse for us. Not because he did any sin. In him was no sin. But curse everyone that hangeth on a tree. He was our propitiator. He died for us. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, just like we just like what we read uh, about the heathen uh, being blessed through through uh, Abraham. Might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So this right here will also answer that verse to Acts 2.38 where people will say, well, you have to be water baptized in order to receive the Holy Spirit. 
Well, here, according to Paul, you receive the promise of the spirit through what works? No faith. And we just got done reading here back up in 12 that the law is not of faith. So it is not water baptism that one receives the Holy Spirit. Subsequently, you're not saved. You don't get the Holy Spirit until you're saved in this new covenant. So if you don't get the Holy Spirit until you're saved, then, you know, you're not a believer. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you're a believer. And as we see, you only get the Holy Spirit through what? Faith. Verse 15, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or added thereto. So you don't add or take away to this, this new covenant or else, like Paul says in Galatians 1, you have a new gospel. You add or take away from it, you have a different gospel. 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now watch. Paul's going to expound here. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed by before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So we're looking at here when God made his covenant with Abraham, that through Abraham, all the nations will be blessed. Here he says that through Abraham and his seed. And Paul makes the, the clarification that it's not seeds, plural, but seed as in one, that seed being Jesus Christ, that all nations will be blessed because this seed will come through Abraham and this seed would be the one to bless all nations. So in 17, he says that, the law came 430 years after this covenant was made with Abraham. And he says that even though this, this law came as far as it did after that, it never took away from the original intent that God made the covenant with Abraham about. So in other words, the, 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 the covenant that, that God made with Abraham essentially would be our new covenant. That was the actual only covenant that was made to redeem man. So here Paul is saying that this, this what we would call old covenant came after God established his, what we would call new covenant, this old covenant came after that. And even though it came after that, it didn't take away anything from the promise that God originally made to Abraham about him and this covenant being made through this seed that will bless all nations. So essentially what we're seeing here is that the new, the quote unquote new covenant actually was established first before the quote unquote old covenant covenant. It's just that the new covenant wasn't realized until Christ came. In the meantime, we had the quote unquote old covenant. And then the new covenant came, which the Bible says is built on better promises. Okay, let's go to 18 for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So we again, we just read that the law is not of faith. And here it's saying that if the inheritance be of the law, then it is no more of promise. But then he says, but 
God gave it to Abraham by promise. So this, this promise that, that all nations will be blessed through Abraham uh, and his seed wasn't given to Abraham because he did you know, good works and, and he was obedient enough. No, God made, God made the covenant with him and Abraham believed. He believed and Abraham was kind of righteousness off of his belief. Abraham did not do anything to earn the uh, grace for God to use him in such a way. But still and yet he did. Okay, 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? In other words, in other words, if we had this law, if we had this, this quote unquote, you know, the old covenant, what purpose did it serve? Well, Paul is about to explain the whole purpose of what it serves. It was added because of transgressions till the seed shall come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So we see the whole purpose of the law of this old covenant was given why to justify man no it was given because of the transgression of men that's why it was given and he says till the seed should come to whom the promise was made that was there and as we're going to see it was it was a means to point to the actual original covenant who the covenant was was made through this was to point to christ 20 now a mediator is not a mediator of one but god is one is the law then against the promises of god god forbid for if there had been a law given which could have given life verily righteousness should have been by the law so we we will see on one hand, how Paul, you know, he says the, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. He says how the law is powerless or made weak through the flesh. On one hand, he is on one hand, he sounds like he's almost like bashing the law, but he's not. But what he's saying is he, he said that the law is, is spiritual. The law is holy. And but then here he explains he says that if there were if there was a law that could give life, then he will say, well, yes, you do have righteousness that could come by the law. But he says there is no law that does that carries out that promise, the promise of eternal life. There is no law that does that. And as we just read, the, this law was given for transgressions until the seed would come. So there is no life giving power anywhere in the law or anywhere in doing good, good works. Verse 22, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by works, no, by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that be leave nothing about works why because the scripture concluded all under sin everybody's broken god's law everybody's missed the mark so if you can't be righteous in the eyes of god by living a sinless life the only other way is through faith and since no one has ever lived a sinless life and you know we're we're not talking about Christ but no other man on the face of earth has ever lived a sinless life that means no one can come to the father except by who by Christ and that's by faith to so all of them that believe not work not mixing the working of the old covenant versus the faith and grace of the new but strictly the faith, the grace of the new covenant. 23, but before faith came, 
we were kept under the law. Shut up unto faith, which which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So like in Romans 3.19, Paul says he echoes something very similar. He says how uh, the law was given to shut up the world or stop up the world. Essentially, there is something for everybody in the law to point to. You did this. You've done this. You've done this. No one can say that they've never broken the law. Even believers, no believer can say that, well, I've never, as a believer, since I've come to faith and, and, and been saved, I've never done anything wrong. No, because you are still in your sinful flesh. And at some point in time, you're going to do something that goes against God, that transgresses God in word, thought, or deed. It's just what it is in uh, us still living in our sinful flesh. So, 24 says that the law was our schoolmaster. It says to bring us unto Christ. So we're saying that the law was never given to give life. Paul says if there was a law that could give life, he would say verily righteousness has come by the law. But that's not the case. He says that the law was given because of our transgressions until that a uh, seed came. Now here in 24, we're singing that the law was given to bring as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified. How? By faith. You see, you, you, you see how you can't mix works and grace. You can't mix law and faith. It's, it's one or the other. And since the first one was given strictly because, because no one could keep it. Everyone sinned. It was always intended for this new covenant to be the actual only thing to redeem man through. 25. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So... No one is under this old covenant, okay? Okay, when Christ came, now we were under a new covenant. So we've read about how the New Testament is in Christ's blood, how you can't have a, uh, uh, another testament without the death of a testator first, right? And so it says in here in 25 again, but now, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster so that law has been done away with and we are now under grace since christ has came and i would say a good a good picture of this is i've used this before the adulterous woman who was caught in the act according to the law she was to be stoned and the pharisees were getting ready to stone her they were actually doing the right thing according to the mosaic law they were actually doing the right thing. And technically, you know, they were still under Old Testament law until Christ died for sin. Right. They, they were still under under law. But now that Christ came, we saw the transition now. So Christ asked them, he's, well, he says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And what do we know what happened? One by one, they each dropped their stones and walked away. And Christ, that woman deserved what she did according to the Mosaic law. And yet Christ saved her, even though she didn't deserve it. She was spared and Christ told her to go and sin no more. So here we have a picture of the law and what man deserves versus grace through Christ. Okay. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Not by works, but by faith. Not faith and works, but by faith 
in Christ Jesus. For as many for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So, we see that this promise of eternal life came by God making the covenant he established with Abraham and his seed, which Paul reveals that was Christ, and through Christ, we are redeemed back to the Father. And so, we see now that under the old covenant, it was about doing works in order to be blessed. Now, no one, now let me make this clear, no one was, no one was saved under the old covenant by works. We we just got done reading about how Abraham <clears throat> was was uh, righteous by faith. So the old covenant had nothing to do with you doing enough good works to either try to you know get to heaven or hell. It was it's always been by faith. The old covenant was how Israel was to be blessed in their lives. If they were to, if they were to heed to all of God's commandments and statutes, if they didn't, then they will reap curses. Nonetheless, it was a way to point to man to say, when you try to do everything on your own, you can't. So I'm going to send my son into the world so that he's going to live the life. He's going to die the death, bleed the blood that no one else can bleed. No one else can die the death for him. And you guys are going to be redeemed through him. We see that the law was never meant to save, nor can it. It's always been about this new covenant, what we will recognize as new. Because that was the original covenant that was established with Abraham. And as Paul said, it came, he said, about 430 years later after God established the original covenant, which will be realized when Christ came. But he says that never took a, the law or that old covenant never took away the, the effect promise of what God established with Abraham and his seed when he did. So. You know, when when people talk about mixing faith and, and, and works and, yeah, you have to believe in Christ, but then you also have to do good works and this, that, and the third. Well, we see here a clear cut distinction between works and grace and how they do not mix. And we literally see Paul going after Peter about being a hypocrite and having Gentiles try to live after the manner of. Of Jews and he says you're not obeying the truth of the gospel you think you have to do X Y and Z works in order to be made righteous and that's not the case anytime you feel like you have to do works in order to be saved guess what you're not obeying the gospel because the, if you were saved off of faith and not works and now you're saying that, well, now I have to do good works in order to stay saved. Guess what? You're not obeying the gospel. The thing that got you to be righteous in the first place is the thing that's going to keep you. That's why Paul made the point to say the spirit and you doing miraculous works. Are you doing them through works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He, he, he kept reiterating himself. So for those who like to mix works and, and, and faith, you know, again, I would ask, what covenant are you under? Because you cannot mix the two. And from what we see, once faith came, we were no longer under the schoolmaster, that being the law, that being the old covenant. So 
Um, you know, I hope and pray that, you know, this encouraged people, um, gave people maybe a little bit more hope, people that may be worried about, you know, their salvation or whatever the case is. I'm here to tell you that we are under a new covenant. That new covenant was established from what we see through Christ. And he was sent to bless all nations. We have faith through Christ to them that believe. Not work, but believe. And you cannot mix works and faith. Paul says that the law is not of faith. Because if it is, then it is not of the promise. It's of you doing your own, your own works, your own efforts. So, you know, I pray God got the glory first and foremost, and I pray whoever comes in contact with this video will be blessed and edified by it. So until next time, I love you all, and God bless.